Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. What you just saw, all these sheath systems, are going to be the introduction to the website. I'm shooting a new video for the website that's going to be an introductory video. Okay? Um, and basically what the video is going to be is I'm going to go through each system and these are a wide range of what we do here at, at Yellowhawk Customs, okay? It's actually Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors because we do more than just sheaths. I design knives, um, I teach a little bit of survival, bushcraft, um, I just I help guys out where I can, right? So this video, like I said, it's going to be the introductory video to the website so you get a good idea of what we do, okay? And I ask every prospective client or client to watch this video, and this will really help you out. It will answer questions. It's fairly long. It's going to be at least a half hour, 45 minutes. But I'm telling you, if you're serious about having a custom Kydex sheath built, you really need to see this video, okay? So if you guys stay tuned, we'll get right to it. You're back, huh? Pretty cool introduction. Okay. I'm kind of just going to dive right in and then I'll add pieces of information as I show you the options, the sheath systems. Now, the actual sheath system itself, the design, okay, is going to be pretty much the same across the board, okay? This is the shape of our, of our sheath systems, right here. That's our shape. It could be bigger, it could be smaller, uh, it could be wider, it could be thinner, but that's about the shape. And the reason it is this shape is because when we did our testing, research, development, right, um, most of the testers liked this shape right here, right? What they really found more than anything else is this tip right here. They wanted it rounded a little bit. So that's what we do now. We don't leave it nice and pointy. We round them off. Okay. So basically, some of them we don't. It depends on the sheath. But see how this is rounded? Okay. But the actual shape of the sheath is pretty much the same across the board. Until you get into big rigs like this, then they're custom. You know, fully custom. So this first sheath, this is a basic Sear 1 sheath system. Okay? Basic Sear 1 sheath system. Now, if you have a knife this size, this is a BK-16 with about a 4-inch blade. About. If you have a knife this size, the blade is this size. Okay? That's what your sheath is going to look like. It could be a multitude of different colors though. Um, usually I use black eyelets. Sometimes I'll use colored eyelets if the client asks for them. Okay? But there are certain parameters within which I work where green uh, eyelets might not fit that particular kydex because it's too thick or whatever. Okay? So that's we will go over all that when you contact me. It is very difficult for us because of how we do things and how much we do. It's very difficult for us to just have you order a sheath off a website. Okay? I don't generally do it that way. If you want to see some basic sheath systems for some production knives, go to my eBay listings. Okay, we make them fairly quick. They're cheaper than our customs. Um, they're still a little more expensive than everybody else because of how we build them and how much time we put into them. Okay, we don't make the common mistakes that most new uh, sheath makers make. We just don't make them anymore. Our retention is perfect. 
the knife does not rattle inside the sheath. That, that's a, I find that an issue with a lot of other sheaths on the market is that people actually think it's okay when you put the knife in the sheath for that knife to rattle in the sheath a little bit. It's okay a little bit. No, it's not. Not for me. When you get a sheath system from us, no play, no rattle, right? There might be a teeny bit back and forth, just a, a hair. But if that, if that knife rattles in that sheath, it's not going out of this shop until it's not rattling, okay? Um, we're usually really good at fit and finish. I want them absolutely perfect before they leave this shop, okay? You can tell by my YouTube channel, just watch a few of the videos, um, Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors on YouTube, and you'll see how anal I am about these sheath systems. They got to be tough, high quality, combat, wilderness grade, just bomb proof, okay? So there's a basic sheath system right there. And the basic sheath system is a combat grade or wilderness grade Kydex, which is 093 or thicker, okay? Um, with a tech lock on the back or a slide lock belt clip. Let me see if I can find one. Here's a slide lock right here. Okay, Zach's got some eBay sheath systems on his desk. That's our slide lock belt clip. Okay, it's a decent belt clip. Tech locks are better, they're stronger, and they're adjustable. But this is a pretty decent belt clip for what it is. Okay, and this is how it works. You push the detents in. The gate pops up, you put it on your belt, push it back down, lock it into place. Real simple, no must, no fuss. These are really easy to use. Easier than tech locks, okay? This is a tech lock, okay? All the prices are going to be in the description box of each of the photos on the website. Most of the photos have ballpark pricing. So if there's a ballpark price, that ballpark price is generally the price of the sheet that's in that video or in that picture, I'm sorry. The price of the sheet that's in that picture. If you change it in any way, you want solid instead of a pattern kydex or you want pattern kydex instead of solid or you don't want a fair ride, it changes the price. Okay, everything we do is by hand. Everything you see is built and shaped by hand. I don't use any templates, no forms, no molds. Well, I use a mold to do the sheath, but you know, no prefab parts, nothing like that. That's one way of doing it, and guys make sheaths quick that way. But I call them cookie cutter sheaths. They all look the same. You know what I mean? These are all custom, all different, all fully you and with my help. Okay? So there it is. This particular sheath uh, is made out of Raptor Black 093 Kydex. Black Raptor. Black Raptor. Okay, so that's a basic sheath system. Now, I opted to put a paracord wrap on this one, but they don't come with that for a basic sheath, right? So there's a basic sheath. Got our combat scallops in it. It allows you to get down onto that uh, finger guard real far so that when you pull that knife it's in the your fingers are right there in the right position okay there's a basic sheath system okay let's do this one next okay this is one that I just built for a guy in Australia right this is fairly comprehensive it's got a night core tube light on it where the you know, push button, right? And how this works is when you're wearing it, you fold back the tabby dangler, right? And you're wearing it in cross draw mode, just like this, cross draw, right? When you're wearing it like this, all you have to do is press the light on and guide that light wherever you want it to go because it's going to have some give on your belt, okay? And that light shines out in front of you. You can go anywhere you want in the dark because the light is right on your sheath. Okay? Turn it off when you're done. 
If you want to recharge it, you pull it out of the holder, recharge it with the uh, charging port, the mini USB. When it's all charged up, put it back in, and you're ready to rock and roll again. Okay? Now, you can also take this out, all right? Oh, I already said that already, and charge it, okay? So there it is. I can also make it so that you can turn it around, put it in the other way, right? This one's not made that way, okay? But you can turn it, turn it around, put it in the other way, and wear it in dangler mode too, like this. Just point the beam where you want it to go, okay? Real simple, real effective. This is just one of our lights. This is the least common that we put on sheath systems. The least common, okay? But it, it's there if you want it. It's an option, okay? Um, so we'll go, well, let me look, we'll go with the rest of it. We've got a face mount ferro rod, ATAX Vista Kydex for all the add ons, all the holders, right? This is our black brick pattern. 095 thickness kydex okay it's sold as 093 but generally i get it a little thicker okay face mount ferro rod a fine diamond sharpener on it fine diamond sharpener this is how this works undo the shock cord retention it's still not going to come out of there okay still not coming out of there undo the hub right you got to undo the hub in order to get it out, right? Take it out, extend the rod, put the hub back on, and you're ready to sharpen your knife. Okay, this is a fine diamond rod. It'll get a little finer with every use, right? To the point where it, it becomes a honing rod then, okay? These are good quality uh, diamond sharpeners without breaking the bank, if you will, okay? You want to put it back on, undo the hub, slide that puppy back in as far as it'll go. It only, it'll only butt up against the shock cord, okay? Um, I'm sorry. Take the hub off again. Take the hub off, slide it back in, put the hub back on, <laughs> okay? Put the hub back on. Now make sure when you put the hub back on, it's nice and snug. Okay? If this is loose, your rod will fall out and you will lose it. Okay? If it's tight, it will not fall out. Put the shock cord retention back on and you're good to go. On the back, we got a slide lock belt clip. I usually put tech locks on, but some clients want slide locks. Okay? Slide lock belt clip, which you can reconfigure a couple of different ways on this sheath. You can put it in vertical as well. Okay? for pack carry, right? It's got a tabby dangler with Herman Oak oiled and waxed leather loops, okay? Herman Oak is extremely high quality veg tanned leather, which we, uh, we skiv and burnish ourselves and then we tool it, right? Put tooling on there, we put our logo in there and other tooling, if you want it, we'll put your initials in there, right? And then we oil and wax it so it's weatherproof, okay? There's a tabby dangler. This is called our tabby dangler shore up plate, right? This allows us, this system allows us to keep a clip on the sheath at all times, okay? Rather than, you know, other makers, they put that offset plate on there that comes out this way and it's bolted on the side. It comes out and up and the D-ring is up there, right? You can't you can't put a tech lock or a, a belt clip on that. You have to take it off before you put it on. This system that we've designed and have been using for quite a while makes it so that you can put a tech lock clip or a belt clip on this sheath and keep it on there at all times. If you want to remove the tabby dangler, these two screws come out. You take the whole plate, everything comes with it. Okay? Then you got yourself just a straight belt carry. 
or a pack carry, okay? But right now it's a tabby dangler with a slide lock in multi-position, all right? You can also, okay, now if you want it this way, you got to ask me to build it this way. I don't build them all this way. Every one of these sheath systems in this video is going to a client. I just happened to get a bunch of them together, so I'm doing a new video for the website. So you can see what we do here at Yellowhawk. You can take this clip off and put a molly lock on here or two, right? So you can just see the last hole here and the hardware is already in there. We already set it into the Kydex. So all you got to do is screw into it. Put a, te uh, put a molly lock on there, a molly lock strip like, like this. This molly lock right here, right, will fit here. And then another one will fit over here if you want it to. So it's nice and stable. But you got to ask for it if you want it, okay? That's it for that one, okay? Um, generally, you don't have to worry about screws coming loose, but I would check all screws once in a while just to make sure they're snug they don't have to be really tight just snug okay because Murphy's law tells me that they're screws and they will come loose over time whether I use these bushings or not these are rubber bushings that give negative retention on the screw and keeps it from coming out right they work they work pretty good but they're still screws, okay? So there's that one. Show you the ferro rod. Just undo the shock cord, pull that puppy off and use it. Okay? Pop it back on, you're good to go, ready to rock and roll. Sometimes we'll even put a, uh, a striker on there for you, okay? If you want it, you have to ask for it. Okay? There's that one. Okay, so I'm, I'm working from smaller to the more comprehensive sheath systems. Okay? So this is the next one. This is fairly comprehensive. This is called the Sear 1 Survival System. Now, just because it says Sear 1 Survival System doesn't mean that you're going to get everything you want or everything that's on this sheet that, that you have to ask for what you want so when you text me right you got to go back to that home page and read those paragraphs right so I'm referring to you texting me right <clears throat> or call you can call but I'd rather you text it's it's just easier okay um, if things become confusing we'll have a phone call all right this is a Sear one survival system this is what this client chose to put on their system right I gave a couple of recommendations and boom I built it for them right this happens to be my design this knife this is the Delta Whiskey Backcountry Wilderness Blade and that's what I designed it to be a one tool option wilderness blade you can only take one this is the one you take right are there other great knives out there? Yes, there are. But couldn't find any that do exactly what this does for me. Okay? So if you're interested in it, Mike Wallace at Wallace Edged Tools builds this knife as a custom knife. He sends it to me. I put a sheath on it, then I send it to you. Okay? You pay him for the knife, me for the sheath system. Okay? This one's for a client, a reviewer, no less, okay? Uh, a YouTube reviewer. So basically, here's what we got. We got the sheath in Coyote Brown Kydex. Got a great thumb ramp on it. All of my sheath systems have thumb ramps, and generally, they'll have combat scallops as well. That's this right here. It allows you to get your fingers up into that finger guard, and... Your finger is nearly where it needs to be. It's not going to be all the way, but that's just impractical, right? You need retention, so the retention kind of uses up a quarter inch of that space. So, But it gets your finger up there as far as it'll go, 
and then all you got to do is scoot it up a little bit and you're ready okay this is like a split second motion okay <clears throat> so we got a tabby dangler with a shore up plate right here tabby dangler herman oak leather got our logos in it right this this client chose to have no other tooling but our logos <clears throat> right on the front is an se accessory pouch on a plate that we build onto the front of the sheath there it is okay this particular sheath has a ferro rod in the webbing right and a standalone diamond rod this is a standalone rod it doesn't have the the housing like the other one does okay it's a standalone rod okay these are a little finer than the other ones okay so some guys want a finer grit I give them this one okay and then, then I build a handle for it right uh, I like them both about the same okay me me personally I like them both so I couldn't recommend one over the other uh, if you want a finer one, then you go for the standalone one, okay? Um, uh, the SE tool pouches, the SE accessory pouches, generally come with the tin inside, okay? There won't be anything in it but a couple of screws, okay? Extra screws for your sheath system, right? You pack it with whatever you want, okay? And then this one also is in Baldrick carry where the tabby D, the tabby dangler D ring becomes your back mount your back mount for the sling and then I build another ring for the front and this is how you wear it okay this is Baldrick system horizontal at an angle Baldrick system okay very convenient this is how I carry big knives right there with a beaching tactical sling okay you can also unhook this d-ring this h and k clip bring it up to the front and hang this thing vertically on your uh on your shoulder so basically kind of looks like this this is going to be crooked but clip it into there and you can wear it vertical as well this this uh, beaching tactical sling okay will extend and shorten um, there's plenty of webbing for you to play with okay and then you got a vertical hanging baldric system okay but I like it in the horizontal position that's how I like to carry it okay then on the back this is what I'm talking about with the two molly locks. One side by, uh, two side by side, equidistant apart. Uh, gives a little bit of stable ride. Um, it works with one, right? It's better with two. But I usually just put one on mine. Okay, but you can have two. This client asked me for two, and we put them on there. Okay? If you just want to have a tech lock on there, and I'll include two molly lock clips, you can put them on yourself. Okay? Um, you got to remind me to send you the hardware, though. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> okay? So here's the Delta Whiskey Backcountry. This is my design. Built by Mike Wallace at Wallace Edged Tools. It's www www.wallaceedgedtools.com Get a hold of him. I think it's like a three or four month wait for this knife. All of his customs. He's a very good uh, knife builder. And he builds everything out of CPM 3V or CPM 154 almost exclusively. These are affordable super steels that do great. They're my favorite. CPM 3V is my favorite steel. Okay? It's strong, it's resilient, it's tough, it's wear resistant to the nth degree. Okay? 
It can be a little harder to sharpen in the field, but diamonds, that's what you need. That's why I put diamond rods on my sheath systems. I don't mess around with stones and stuff, you know, diamonds. I could put a diamond stone on your sheath. That's a different configuration, but diamonds for CPM 3V, the super steels. CPM 3V, S35 VN, etc., etc., etc. Okay? S35V, something like that. Okay? Diamonds will cut the super steels. Okay? It's a little more difficult, but trust me, you can do it. I do it all the time. Okay? It's not a, it's not a huge deal if you use diamonds. Fine diamond rods. Okay? Alright, so there's that system. This is the Beechin Tactical Sling made by Jacob Peterson at the Prepper's Bunker. Beechin Tactical Sling. It's got 30 feet of paracord on it. You can take the paracord off, use it for whatever you want, and you can still use the sling. Okay? H and K clips. I mean, these things are just really nice. Okay? There's that system. Okay? Move on to this guy right here. Yeah? No? Yes? Maybe? <clears throat> Let's go with this one. This is a different pouch. Okay? This one has a Condor mill spec pouch. The other one was an SE tool pouch. The SE is a little bit wider. This one is a little bit longer but skinnier. So you can see them side by side. Okay? You just have to choose what pouch you want. I like the SE better than this one. However, they are both good pouches. That's why I use them. Um, depends on what you would have put it put in them. If you just need a smaller pouch for uh, a Leatherman or something like that, I go for this one. If you want a tin in your pouch, go for the SE. Okay, or whatever. Only limited by your imagination. Okay. This particular system is in Black Raptor with zombie green or toxic green add-ons, okay? This is a common theme among our sheath systems where I'll use a solid color that's really thick for the main sheath system and then a, another color or pattern for the add-ons, for the holders and stuff, okay? This one has our brand new Phoenix E05 Hawk Light Assembly. Okay? And there it is. Okay? It is designed to be taken out of the holder, turned on to whatever brightness you want. It goes up to 85 lumens. That's pretty bright for a small flashlight like this. They're bomb proof. They're waterproof. They're great little lights. That's why I use them. Plus, they work and work well with how we do things here. Okay, then you put it, you slip it back in in whatever configuration you want it in. Okay, this happens to be cross draw mode, right? Where you just kind of do this and the beam of light goes where you want it to go. Or you can take it out, turn it around, and put it in the other way. Okay, for dangler mode. Okay, you just lift up your sheath a little bit and the beam goes where you want it to go okay just like that all right you want to turn it off there is a way to do it while it's still in the holder but i recommend you do it outside the holder first and then practice the other way okay because it can be a little different in order to do it in the holder to it to scroll through the brightnesses you have to push it all the way forward right and kind of hold the back of it then do it okay and then when you're done you turn it off you put your shock cord retention uh, strap back on and it stays in there okay this one has a Sunto compass on it this is the best mini compass on the market in my opinion very precise it has a rotating bezel Okay, it actually clicks, right? Very nice compasses, and they glow in the dark, right? We also have these. 
These are our standard compasses. These are decent. These are decent compasses. Suntos are better. 32 bucks, right? These are like six, right? If you're, if you're used to the finest gear, get the Sunto. If it really matters, get the Sunto, okay? But if you just need a accessory compass, these will do you, right? And if something happens to it, because they're plastic, if you break them, these, I'll give you a new one. These, if you break it, you got to deal with Sunto. I can't just be giving these out. <laughs> Okay, all right, good compass, right? Fine diamond rod on the side, condor mill spec pouch, right? We attach it to a plate, put it on the front of the sheath. This is also a Baldrick system. This doesn't have the sling on it though. Tabby dangler, this one actually has a tech lock in multi-carry that can be taken off and two molly locks put on it side by side, okay? If you want a two molly lock system, you got to tell me. Otherwise, it might be a one molly lock system. Okay? If you say, hey, Doug, I want this system with a molly lock. That doesn't mean two molly locks. You said a molly lock. That's what you get. Right? If you say, I want two molly locks on it, then that's what you'll get. Okay? Specific. Got to be specific. Once they're built, they're built, man. They're built. All right? So there's that one. I'll give you a good look at it again. Black Raptor and Toxic Green. These are just systems that we've been building the last couple of days that I'm including in this new introductory vi uh, video. These are the ones we just happened to build at this point in time. 